Google states that the most basic signal that information is relevant is when a web page contains the same keywords as a search query. Keywords, keywords, keywords. 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 <laughs> I'm talking about some keywords. Great marketers know that their great content needs to include the exact words that people are typing into search engines. But how do you find the right words that people are typing into Google search when looking for a product or service? Hey, I'm Clint, and I'm gonna make this whole keyword thing really easy. Let me show you how to find your primary and secondary keywords using Google Keyword Planner for free. No credit card needed. Hang out to the end of the video and I'll show you all the ways that I messed up while creating this video. To set up Google Keyword Planner, use Chrome and set up a new incognito browser. No one can ever know my real identity. Go to ads.google.com and then click sign in. Sign in with a Google account and then click new Google Ads account. Now the trick to get around sharing your credit card. Click switch to expert mode. Oh hell yeah, you about to be an expert. Put it on your business card. Sneaky thing number two, click create an account without a campaign. Confirm your business settings, then click explore your account. Click tools, then choose keyword planner. You'll get two options here. Find keywords and get search volume and forecasts. You'll use the first option to find keywords. Oh, that reminds me, I have an idea. Nope, just lost it. You can now input topics or words related to your business, brand, product, or service. Also, think about what words or phrases would people use to find what you offer. What questions are customers always asking? Oh wait, no, it just came back to me. And I lost it. Notice that Google will also give you suggestions to broaden your search. This can be helpful to turn you onto terms or categories that you didn't even know about. You'll now see different categories. Your keywords on the far left, then average monthly searches, then competition, and then cost per click range. Keywords that have a high amount of search volume and a high amount of competition are what we would call your primary keywords. Ooh. These guys right here. Let me tell you all about these primary keywords. These primary keywords, these little bastards, these little bitty bastards. Primary keywords are important, but they're usually tough to rank for. Primary keywords are words that your business has to go after no matter what. They are so closely aligned with what you do that it doesn't matter if you don't have a chance to rank for them in the next month because you would like to invest the time in ranking for them eventually. I got my eye on you, primary keywords. I got my eye on you. You'll notice these two prices too. This is your PPC or price per click range. Google AdWords allows people to pay to have their content appear on the first page of Google. Now, these numbers give you a high and a low range. If you use AdWords for these keywords, every time someone clicks your website link, you get charged the price for that keyword. If the range is high, then you can bet that other companies are paying for these specific keywords. Sometimes even if a keyword has a lower search volume, it might have a higher buyer intent. For example, if I typed in where to buy a car in Bloomington, this is a high buying intent phrase, even though Bloomington is a small town and I may not have a ton of monthly searches here. All that to say you want to select words that have a high search volume, high competition and PPC price and that are connected to your business. Okay, so high search volume, high competition, big old PPC price. All right, I think I got that. Next, we need to find your secondary keywords. You need some keywords on the board even if they don't have the highest amount of search volume. Enter secondary keywords. Okay, 
So these little guys are cool. They're just there and they're nice and they're real chill. Like everyone likes the secondary keywords. These are keywords that are less competitive but are still related to your product or service. Ranking for these words will eventually increase your site traffic and build your search engine rankings. Look for keywords with a good amount of searches and with low or medium competition. This makes them easier to rank for. Secondary keywords are like, I guess you can rank for me, like whatever, no pressure, like no need to be all competitive or anything. You can rank for me, that's cool. Apply filters to narrow down the competition category. Click the add filter button, click competition. Then click matches say, you know, low or medium. To make it even easier, click the box that says average monthly searches and it will now display the keywords from the highest to the lowest monthly searches that are also low in competition. Now select keywords that both align with what you offer and align with what your audience wants to know. Notice that as you check off keywords, you can then add them to a group. I recommend having one group for primary keywords and one group for secondary keywords. Once you have both primary and secondary lists, click download keywords and now you're good to go. I got your keywords, you're not going anywhere. Now you have a list of keywords. What the hell do you do with them? Do you have a picnic with them? Do you paint them on canvas? Do you give them the talk about the birds and the bees? See, when a primary keyword loves a secondary keyword very much, they make what's called content. It's time to take your primary keywords and to put them on the core pages of your website. Include them on your home page, your service page, your pricing page, and yes, you should have a pricing page. We know your stuff costs money. Your about page and your contact page. Most of the work that you do in content marketing will be about making these pages appear higher in search results. By the way, if you try to spam or to stuff keywords by just placing them all throughout your site in an unnatural way, this will not help you. This is not the Smurfs. You can't smurf all your web pages by smurfing them with just more Smurfs. Clint Malley is the content of content marketing. He makes sure that he contents the heck out of marketing when he's not content marketing. This will hurt you. Don't do that. Use keywords like a real human person. I am a keyword robot, must rank on Google. These keywords should be connected to your product or service anyway. The easiest way to ensure that you used your primary keywords on your web pages is to just hit Control F. This is a function on your keyboard that allows you to highlight certain words on your web page. So type in your primary keywords one at a time and make sure that you've included them throughout your site at least one to three times per page. You will begin to discover how keyword research actually makes you a better writer and business because you are prioritizing the words of your customer when you're creating content. When you start to think about your content as being helpful and value-driven above all else, then you're on the right track. This is just the beginning of helping search find your content and having it rank in search engine results, or SERP. However, in order to support these web pages, we're going to have to be content creators. This means that you're gonna to have to produce some content other than these core web pages. And this means you're gonna to need to come up with some content ideas. Oh, now I finally remember. It was a good one. So, nope, gone again. My idea is gone again. You can only include so many keywords on your core pages without actually having to create some content or more web pages for your site. One day, Clint liked content and asked marketing what kind of content he likes in his marketing. This is why people turn to content marketing. Simply put, content marketing is producing quality, value-driven content on a consistent basis. The big types of content marketing include blogging, video, and podcasts. However, each piece of content needs to add a web page with keyword content, meaning letters that make up words onto your website. 
Now, a blog is pretty straightforward, but if I'm creating a video or a podcast, then I'm gonna need to have that content transcribed through a service like Sonics or Rev. Take the transcription of these and put them on a web page and embed them as a podcast or a video too at the top of that page. Okay, okay, so you're saying that I need to have keywords on web pages, is that right? Now, just because you're transcribing this content from a video or a podcast, you're still gonna need to do some basic editing here to make sure that your sentences are free of errors and you should also add some headings and subheadings and some images. This will help search engines pick up the keywords from your content. Therefore, no matter what type of content that you plan to produce, every content marketer in some way is a blogger. There is one problem though. How do I come up with topics for my content? Oh yeah, about that. Where do we get those topic ideas? That was my idea, I finally nailed it. Okay, for real this time, here's the idea. If you want to figure out how to find topics using your primary and secondary keywords, using a baller free tool, you need to check out my video. Or you can check out the blog post that's linked in the description box with all the details. Now, enjoy these bloopers. Click create forecast. Use the first option. option. Okay, primarily aligned with what you do that you have to swallow in the middle of a sentence. Content marketing. Okay, Clint asked content, what kind of marketing do you like in his content? 